Hey friends, I'm Amanda Muse and welcome back to my channel. We're gonna have a little heart to heart Wednesday. How does that sound? We're day 47 right now, quarantine in Canada, and it's not great. It's not great. I feel like my mood ebbs and flows day to day. Um, and based on my DMs from you guys, I think a lot of us are feeling the same. So I thought we could just do a little sharing. I could give you a little update as to where I'm at. You know, how things are going, um, how I'm dealing with some of the ups and downs and the art of distraction. And uh, just kind of just do a little, a little share thing because anxiety is real, your feelings are valid, and I thought we could talk about it. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I was sitting here over the last two days trying to think about what I was gonna talk about in today's video, I was honestly a bit paralyzed by my own brain. I just can't seem to get the momentum to do certain things and other things I'm doing really well at. So it's like this real balance right now and I definitely have some triggers and it's just, oh, it's a lot. And in sharing sometimes, um, and not just sometimes, but more often than not, by sharing a story, you connect with other people. And so I was like, Amanda, just do what you do. And that's sharing your heart. So I'm gonna share. I'm gonna take it back to Sunday night. I have dealt with anxiety and some panic things in my past. So on Sunday night, we were having a good night. We were having a good day. Um, I'd had a really productive weekend. Like Saturday, I did all this yard work and I was feeling like a freaking farmer and it was amazing. Um, and Sunday, we were just hanging out, watching TV. And in fact, we kind of all got the munchies. And so we ordered a pizza. There was something off with this pizza and I felt like the cheese was weird. Um, and Esme and I had shared this one pizza and then Dean had had a different one. Okay, whatever, right? It's just pizza. So we go to bed that night and um, I can't say that I was having Having any real like restless thoughts before bed. I've been really good with you know managing my day where as I go to bed I don't read the news, I try not to look at Facebook or like anything that could potentially send me information that might send me spiraling. And for me that's looking at death toll numbers for coronavirus, COVID-19, along with children being impacted and sick with this. Like that video that was going around on Facebook with the child with coronavirus and like on the ventilator, like I cannot. As parents, there are so many things I make up in my mind that bring me absolute fear that runs through my body. Like this is a real threat and I just find it so terrifying I can't let my mind go there. So anyways, I was doing good. I wasn't doing any of that. Uh, something that I have done to help like regulate my thoughts and my, you know, just my breathing patterns and these little things which seem so minor but if your breathing gets out of whack, that impacts so many other things. So I watch ASMR videos before I go to bed. So fall asleep, all is good. Well, I wake up at like 2 a.m. So it only been about two, three hours since I'd been asleep. And I hear the sound of crying. And Jack was crying downstairs. The kids were sleeping in a tent in the basement whatever, you're surviving, right? Uh, but he was having one of those like night terrors where he wakes up crying, but he doesn't know that he's awake. And if you ask him about it the next day, he has no recollection of it. So long story short, I go downstairs and I realize that he's just, you know, waking up with one of these night terrors. It's funny, as I'm even telling you the story, I'm getting like, ooh, my breathing is changing. Anyway, I'll just kind of get through it. Uh, Cause there is a trigger in here for me that's quite serious. So um, as I'm booking it down the stairs though, I'm feeling a sense of panic coming over me, but I'm recognizing it. So it's almost like I'm having two parallel thoughts. Like, oh, my breathing is getting weird and I'm starting to sweat. That makes no sense, like a cold sweat. And then my other side of the brain is going, it's okay, honey, you're having a weird panic attack right now. Like, you can handle this. You're fine. Everything's fine. You're safe, you know? So as I'm taking Jack out of the tent and I'm going to put him into a bed with Dean, there's a bathroom right there. And the long story short is I feel really nauseous all of a sudden, which is another symptom of a panic attack. And I realize I'm about to throw up. And throwing up for me is like, the worst. I'm pretty sure I have a slight version of, I think it's called emetophobia, which is um, like panic inducing experiences around me throwing up. People can have it where it's like, if you see someone else throwing up, like, yeah, that grosses me out. I used to experience some trauma around that, but 
it brings about a whole spectrum of feelings within me and um, I can spiral pretty quick like I won't anyway I don't want to get into it because I don't even like talking about it but being very vulnerable at the moment, even sharing the story. So I start throwing up. Jack is standing there, still crying, because he's having like a night terror. <laughs> and Dean is completely oblivious, because he's like in a deep REM sleep or something. So in the middle of like heaving, I run over, try to wake him up. He doesn't know what's happening. I'm in a shade of panic. Um, and I have to somehow calm my thoughts around the vomiting because that is like such a big trigger for me. Like my thoughts start to spiral and I feel like I won't recover from it. It's a really weird thing. I now know that I'm pretty sure I have some PTSD from an experience I had in Bali. If you're curious about that story, I actually have a story time about it. It's a little bit weird, but there's a whole thing and I split my lip open and anyway, it's like, it was a very personally traumatic experience around sickness and bathrooms. And so I have a weird trigger around it. So I'll link that or down below. Um, but the long story short is it sent me into a panic attack. So like I knew it was happening at least. And now I feel like because of experiencing them a few times, they don't get as severe as they once did. So I know that something that calms me is ASMR. So I immediately like splashed water on my face, the back of my neck, brushed my teeth, you know, uh, grabbed some water, drank some water, and then just like lay down in bed and was honestly like just talking to myself, like you're okay, you're gonna be okay. Take a deep breath, just calm your energy and then watched ASMR videos. <sighs> wow, I'm very triggered by even retelling of the story. The next day, um, I felt pretty rough and let's be honest, like in a time where having the chills and uh, flu-like symptoms, which can be different in people, is going to be very triggering and I have a lot of anxiety around health stuff. There was a family member of mine that was very sick a lot of the time that I was growing up, could have been perceived sickness, I don't know, but I have a very strange relationship with illness. So, um, all of that culmination along with pay attention if your breathing changes, if you get the chills. And so I was having the chills as I was trying to fall asleep, but it wasn't chills. It was literally like my nervous system, like tripping up, you know, like I'm sitting there shivering watching this video. And I think the scary part about these types of things is that you feel very alone because you, I was alone, you know, and I can't even imagine experiencing those feelings of panic and anxiety if you're living by yourself. <sighs> oh, I just had to run around getting one of my children a drink. Um, but I guess the point of this story that I want to share is like, even people who perceive, who we can perceive them to have their SHIT together have weaknesses, have things that they're dealing with, have anxieties. And if there were ever a time for anxiety to be heightened, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say this would be it. There are so many triggers that are happening right now. There are food related triggers. There is isolation and loneliness triggers. There's money related triggers. There's body image because of the food and the lack of socialization, the lack of just movement because we're literally confined to our spaces and our spaces are so different. We've got people living in bachelor apartments, tiny little apartments and sprawling homes and all of the little spots in between. You've got people living in scary situations that are now forced to live with people who threaten them physically or emotionally every day. Like there's so much going on and there's so many feelings around all of it. That one, like I'm not surprised that I had a panic attack. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised it took as long as it did. But the one thing that gave me a little bit of hope the next day is that my daughter told me she had a tummy ache all night. So I was like, okay, it wasn't like totally out of left field. It was a stomach ache, maybe a touch of food poisoning, but not really because I've had severe food poisoning and that was not it. But like a touch of bad food that then was a trigger for me to experience those spiraling emotions. And so, you know, what's working for me is I suppose what I really want to share because as much as, you know, that stuff makes me feel ill. And actually I feel a weird feeling right now, even just talking about it, because it kind of puts you back into that frame of mind of how I felt in the moment. Um, but things that are working is all of the forms of distraction you can think about. 
Something I'm trying not to be too hard on myself right now is not getting so caught up on my, you know, my distraction of choice, if you will. I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of emphasis at times to like look inward and work on things about yourself and emotional intelligence and all of this. And maybe because I have those things and I'm willing to do that work, that also I'm willing to give myself some grace right now and just be like, girl, you listen to that podcast, you take that walk, you eat that caramel sauce, I don't know. I really do have an affinity for caramel sauce. I legit made caramel sauce the other day just to eat it cold. Who cares, you know? Things that are for sure working, I've touched on these before, but in case this is your first video, uh, walking. I love listening to a podcast and going for a walk. It's like one of my favorite things to do, and I look forward to it daily. Unless the weather is really crappy, then I skip it, but that's amazing. The other thing is moving my body in some capacity. Sometimes that looks like an exercise in here and other times I am in the garden like I was all weekend and I now have all these blisters on my hands because I was doing all of this yard work. Um, but I feel such a sense of accomplishment when I do either of those things. Like yes, I worked out or yes, I accomplished a goal and I, was, I get physically tired, like I need to find a way to break that energy that kind of like you know hovers over our person and i just need to switch it up and by moving my body i feel like it really does that the other thing is trying to you know limit the guilt around slowing down i do struggle with that a lot um but you know sitting down and doing a puzzle or i watched a bunch of episodes of a show the other day just like i just sat down and did that and it was lovely um but you know working through my feelings of guilt around all of those things. Um, I don't know what number I'm at at this point because I'm just spewing stuff out there. But the other thing is uh, letting go of some of the expectations that um, I've either created for myself and my family or have been placed there by other people. And the big one is homeschool. I've let it go. Like, I'm not doing it. Come for me. I'm not doing it. It's causing too much stress in the house. I am not a teacher. My kids are feeling stressed to a degree that is, you know, it's not the same type of stress I'm experiencing, but this is something huge that's happened in their life to be stuck home, to be away from friends and family and their routine. And I'm not about to start arguing with them on the daily to do work. Not gonna happen. You learn in many ways. And I read an article today that was supporting this thought and I was like, here, here. So maybe I could read you just a small portion from the professor who I think is a genius. This is an article from the Globe and Mail and it's uh, from April 28th and it says, you know, how some overwhelmed parents are giving up on distance learning and abandoning at home schooling. That would be me. Hey, what up? Professor Ricci is a professor in the Schulich School of Education at uh, Nipissing University in North Bay. And he said, you know, I'll quote this one section here, but he goes, opting out of school is not something they should feel bad about, but something that they should embrace and celebrate. Because what it means is that they're listening to their children, he said. At the end of the day, even if you are a fan of conventional schooling and the curriculum, and you think it's important, P.S. That's me, I'm a huge fan of school. Um, what happens if children actually pause? What is going to happen if they don't do anything up until September or even beyond? Nothing. Nothing is going to happen. Here, here. I don't think it's sustainable for every family and it's certainly not sustainable for ours. And uh, you know, if my kids wanna sit down and we'll open Google Classrooms and we'll do an activity or two, cool. But I'm not about to sit here and uh, be a drill sergeant on my children in a time where I can barely handle the responsibilities that are sitting on my plate. Never in my life have I ever in the span of one day, experienced so many emotions. Um, there's a wonderful Instagram creator, her name is Kenzie Brenna, and she posted a picture today. Um, I'll link it below if I remember, but if not, go follow her, at Kenzie Brenna, pretty sure is her, is her Instagram handle. And she talks a lot about mental health. And there was this one post where she's just looking in the camera and she's got some tears in her eyes and all of these questions, are people mad at me? Will my career survive this? Um, am 
am I doing enough? I don't even know. There's all these great questions. And what it really highlighted to me is one, I'm not alone because I too am having so many heavy thoughts like, will we have to sell our house? Uh, my husband works in the travel industry. When is that going to pick back up? You know, like how much longer will he have a job? How will my job survive this, this crisis, right? And along with all of those very real, not completely irrational thoughts are the thoughts about, you know, what happens if one of my family members gets COVID-19? Um, you know, when they start doing this like, you know, part and parcel where they start reopening the businesses and the society and all of this, like, when can my dad come for dinner? Like, is that gonna be a risk to each of us? And there are so many thoughts at any given point in the day that if you feel like you need a day to just lay down and eat caramel sauce from a jar, then you need to do that. And I think that the more that we talk about these things and the more that we share the struggles, because it's not all Zoom calls and ab workouts and fucking sourdough bread, okay? Like there are real struggles happening right now. And sometimes the weight of it all is just too much. And you know, it's something that I'm trying to focus on right now is at what point do I just pause and just take a day off and do nothing but throw a ball around the yard, which I did yesterday and it was incredible. My kids and I were playing catch and I just, I loved every second of it. You know, Dean hung up a hammock in the yard and um, I just lay in it and I felt complete peace and joy looking up at the pine trees and I could just see like the blue sky through the trees and I was like, this is it. The secret is finding moments of distraction. But what does that really mean? Because distraction can also have a negative tone to it. It's finding things that actually remind you that there is still beauty and joy left in life and it will not be restriction, restriction, uncertain thoughts forever. Um, and that's pretty much my message today. I am turning 36 tomorrow. It's my birthday on April 30th. And I was trying to think of a fun video, like 36 things I've learned in 36 years or something, but I'm not because who the hell knows what I've learned. What I'm learning right now is to take the lows with the nice, high, happy days and that I am not of less value, that I am not weak, that I am not damaged because I have these feelings and you aren't either. That's all I want you to just share today. That's it. That's what I want to share on my 36th birthday. This today, April 29th is the last day that I'm going to be 35 and I welcome the next year and I welcome what it brings and I welcome new and beautiful experiences that I will treasure once we're back out in the world. There's so much I will not take for granted. I tell you that much. All right, friends, thank you for being here. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you on Friday. Bye.